Speaking of yes, little Lucy, Don. You remember a couple months ago, trying to get the take the mask off, mm, and yeah, we were yep. discussing how little Lucy is the you emotional know, times. Dear Mister God, please bring my prima dons back. That's right. She goes crash. way back with the she prima dons show. She does. She does. And a lot of our younger fans are saying, "Well, what were you guys talking about? You know, with the plane crash and and this and that." I'm like, "Well, right. I thought everybody knew that, but we I haven't guess revisited." Kids that. today with the video games, the brains are full of mush. It's a good thing we're here to educate them. It can happen. So I went down to the vaults and I thought, "How can yes. I get these kids up to snuff on what happened back then?" Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I did. Them. And I picked out what we call an interview. I guess the kids now call it what promos. Is that how they refer to it? Something like that. I, I don't know. You know, yeah, square I, I, I don't pay attention to that. But uh, well, let me let me tell you what this leads up to, and we'll let the promo say the rest. Um, this was when Miss J. Wellington Radcliffe, wealthy widow, was owner of the station. Ah, uh, yes. She was going to sell the station and run off to uh, Northeast Mexico City with her love of her life, El Porro. Yes. She had promised Mr. J. Wellington Radcliffe. Love you, Miss Star. Love you, Mr. Love you, Mr. Star. She was going to promise him that we're going to take care of us for life, which she did. She personally smoothed over the rocky road between you and Steven Spielberg and DreamWorks. Mm, right? I recall. Which is the reason why you came back in the first place to do the right, show. Right, she smoothed right. it over. Not only that, she smoothed it over. She gave us a five-picture deal with Steven Spielberg and Green, DreamWorks. That's right. right? That's true. That's so true. we're celebrating. It's the last night. It's the last show of the season. And we're at our usual Roman orgy rap party. Woo! Everybody has food all over the place and not to mention other stuff. So I go, I'm hungry. I see brownies. I eat every brownie on the tray. I thought it was Harmonia's brownies, Don. Uh-uh. And I said to Harmonia, hey, Harmonia, your brownies were great. I'm sorry I ate them all. Those walnuts were fantastic. She said, walnuts? I don't put walnuts in my brownies. And I said, well, whose brownies are those? You, a little belatedly, stepped up and said, oh, yeah, by the way, Don, your brother Trip. It's your brother Trip's brownies. Put some brownies on. They were his hate Ashbury surprise. Surprise. Yeah, I was surprised. I was so surprised I got hauled down to head of a county medical center. I got my stomach bumped. So That was a rough night. It was. Rough night. So the next day, yes. we take off. We're going to go. We're going to get on the plane. We're going out to Hollywood. It's we're going to dot the I's, cross the T's with Steven. Yes, we are. Had a little flashback. Uh, it was a bad flashback. All right, gasping for air, and I want to open a door. So I did. Don't open the door, Don. He I told said, me not to open the door. Don't open the door. Door for the plane. The plane crashed. Everybody else died. You and I, well, I think this will tell you the rest of the story. There we go. That's 2001, a television odyssey. Let's take a look. I remember that. I, was, I needed some oh, air. I really did. Awful. It was really bad. Another day, another day. The Miracle in the Rockies. The one story, the story of the prima donna's survival of a tragic plane crash. The one story that could knock that debacle in Florida off the headlines. The story of you and I crawling on our hands and knees out of a twisting, smoldering wreck before help could ever arrive. Dazed, confused, disoriented, we crawled on our hands and knees across the prairie, all the way to the Mississippi River, Still dazed, still confused, still disoriented. We took a wrong turn, yes, a mistake. We took a left, sure. we went upstream. Sure. We crawled on our hands and knees to the source of the Mississippi, surviving on roots and berries and spring water. Uh, and I've had my fill of spring water. Ah. Uh, finally, a kindly ranger at Itasca State Park turns us around and gets us headed back down the Mississippi. Finally. We arrive in the Mill City. We round that bend on our hands and knees. We see the lights from St. Anthony, Maine, and we know, aha, there lies the house the Prima Dons built, right. MTN Studios. We knew we were home with our cable TV family. That's right. First, we stopped into Nye's yeah, for a quick one, but after that, we, we went in with our cable TV family. That's and, right. Don, we had some dark moments during that journey, did we not? Yeah, we did. We did indeed, but we did. While we lay in that smoldering wreck, there was a very bright light. You're right, Don. We saw the bright light, and it beckoned us, and it said, come forth, come forth, prima donnas. And we came forth, and we strutted on through the pearly gates. But then he, and you all know who we mean when we say he, said, stop, prima donnas. No, stop. It's not your time yet. You need to your go back. Your work's not done yet. No, it's not. You need to go back. 
and to do and to fight the good fight and do what you do, which is to take TV by the scruff of its neck and pull it out of the cesspool of mediocrity that it's become. And you know, Don, as we bask now in the glow of the warm cathode rays of our 24-hour nightlight in a box known as TV, even the air seems to smell just that much fresher now, doesn't it, Don? Did you people think for one split second, did you naysayers think that the prima dons riding a jet airplane at the speed of sound into the side of a mountain was going to take us out? Well, think again because it's not going to happen. Sure, it's not about the naysayers. There's so many people for us to thank uh, Don. Where do we begin? I mean, first of all, our Prima Don's TV family, first and foremost in our hearts. Right, Don? They know who they are. They know exactly who they are. And all you kids out there who wrote us and sent us the letters and emails and everything else. Bless them. Oh, these and kids are great. Especially Mrs. Jones' third grade class. They sent us a big card. Oh. You open it up and it says, Welcome back, Welcome Prima Dons. We're glad you're not dead. Oh, <laughs> the cutest those thing. cute little shavers. <laughs> and most of all, Don, we need to thank our top notch legal team, that's, that's our that's attorneys great. from New York City. We hired that's before great. we went out to Hollywood. The top-notch firm of Krakenhose and Kokenhooks. Indeed. A fine a, firm. A very fine firm. Kenneth Krakenhose, Kari yes. Kokenhooks. Yes. They held it all together while we were missing. And let's not forget Kari Kokenhooks. Back to Kari. Oh. She recently became a mommy. Oh, a nice thing. Was that's sweet. sweet. The little baby girl, seven yes. pounds, three ounces. Oh, yeah. what's her name? And her name is Coco. Coco Kokenhooks. It's Coco Kokenhooks. Isn't Coco. that the sweetest that's little sweet. Coco? That's sweet. <laughs> that's very sweet. They're a fine firm, Don. A fine Absolutely firm. Absolutely the best. Kenneth Krakenhose, Kari Kokenhooks. Mm -hmm. They took care of everything for us while we they were missing. They did. They held or it all together. Or is it Krakenhooks and Kokenhose? I can never get those two. I can never remember, but it's a fine firm, isn't it? They are a fine firm. And you know, what happens when we got back? They smoothed everything over with Spielberg. We still have the five-picture deal. But you know what? We can stay here and fly out to L.A. when we have to. Isn't that right, Don? Sure. We can fly out when we want. And first in that five-picture deal... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> first time ever, Steven Spielberg directing a made-for-TV movie. His first. And Don, what is the name of that movie again? It's The Miracle in the Rockies. It's about the us. Yeah. Story. Yeah. It's about us. <laughs> <laughs> and playing this man right here, yes. George Clooney. He's got a little work to do. He's got some work to do. He does playing yours truly, Brad Pitt. Uh, he's got some crunches ahead. We gotta of lose him. the gut. He's gotta lose the gut. I mean, sure, he's got six pack abs. Any idiot, any oh, moron, six pack any abs. Any knucklehead can have six pack abs. Six pack abs. But to have prima dons, twelve pack, 12 pack abs, abs, the prima dons have. You gotta work on these babies twenty four seven. Right. It's not a casual thing. Sixty five. No, it's not. You gotta put Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And you know, as we start the year two thousand and one, a prima dons television odyssey. Mm -hmm. In a society, Don, that can't even pick a president without having a controversy. Shameful. In a society that is spiraling into nothing more than mediocre mass consumerism, all you people out there can depend upon one thing, that this man and myself, every Tuesday night at 10.30, we're going to be here for you, and That's we're right. going to make you forget right, Don. all about that oh, yeah. for a half oh, yeah. hour every single week. Isn't that right, Don? Since 1995, episode by episode, season by season, and year by year, the prima dons have stayed on top of the cable TV heap. <laughs> there were a few people, a handful, yeah. who tried to stop us, who tried to keep us down. Where they though? But we're still here. That's right, we are still here. And you know, in closing, let us say, as Entertainment Weekly dubbed us last week, they are correct. We are the Rat Pack. Everybody loves somebody sometime. <laughs> yes, they do. And you know, we cannot be stopped. No. And unless we abdicate, we're always going to be the kings of cable. You know That's why? Right. Do you think they know why? Does everybody know why? Tell them why. Because he's Don, I'm Don, and we're the Prima, Prima Dons. Don.